Obviously, the easiest method to convert a fraction to a decimal is using a calculator. Any fraction represents division since you divide the numerator by the denominator. Take 3 over 4 for example. When inputting 3 divided by 4 in your calculator, you get 0.75 as your answer, which makes sense because 3 fourths is equivalent to 75 one hundredths. What about 2 over 3? After you put it into the calculator, we get 0.6666666 with the 6 repeating forever. If you get a decimal that has a repeating pattern, we use bar notation, which is just a way to write repeating numbers. Just place a vinculum, written as a straight line, above the repeated section, and going back to the previous example, you can write 0.6 repeating as 0.6 with a vinculum. Try inputting 3 over 7 in your calculator. We get a repeating pattern of 428571. Because this section repeats over and over again, just place that vinculum we talked about earlier and make it stretch over these six digits to show that the actual answer is 0 0.428571, 0 0.428571 over and over again. Okay, so say you don't have a calculator. This is when you can use long division. The numerator becomes the dividend, the denominator becomes the divisor, and you get the answer as the quotient. But how can you do this when the dividend is obviously smaller than the divisor? We can learn by examples. Let's convert 3 fifths into a decimal. This looks weird since there's no way to take any groups of 5 out of 3, so we have to tack on a decimal point and expand 3 into 3.0. Already, this problem is looking a lot more easier. Now we can just think of 3 as 30 and 5 fits into 30 perfectly 6 times. So our quotient, or answer, is 6, but we aren't done yet. Because we used 1 0 after the decimal point here, we have to add a decimal one place value in front of where it used to be on the quotient. That makes our final answer 0. 0.6. This also works with repeating decimals as long as you keep a lookout for patterns with the remainders. If we have 5 elevenths, we expand this to 5.0, and 11 fits into 54 times. After we subtract 44, we get 6 and bring an extra 0 down to get 60. 11 fits into 65 times, so we mark that up here, and subtract 55 from 60 to get 5. Well, wait a minute. How many times does 11 fit into 50? We've asked ourselves that back here as well. Even if you weren't able to recognize this, continuing the long division makes the repeat of 45 very clear. So, we could just denote this as 0.45 with a vinculum over the two digits. Let's do one more example, 3 over 16, and feel free to pause this video and solve this on your own. What I do first is make the fraction all comfortable and prepared to be long divided. So obviously, we can't take any full groups of 16 out of 3, so let's add a decimal point with an extra 0. 16 fits into 30 one time, so bring a 1 up to the quotient and subtract 16 from 30 to get 14. Because the remainder isn't 0 yet, we still have to keep on going. So add another 0, bring it next to the 14, and see how many times 16 goes into 140, which is 8. Put an 8 here, and then 8 times 16 is 128. Subtract that from 140, we get 12. Let's get another 0, bring it down here, and 16 goes into 127 times. 7 times 16 is 112, subtract from 120, get 8. Notice that so far, there's no patterns to these remainders that we've gotten, so no digits are repeating. After bringing down another 0, we check how many times 16 goes into 80, which is exactly 5 times. Now we have 0 left over and our current quotient is 1875. Remember though, this isn't our final answer. Since we used 4 decimal place values in the dividend, we have to move the decimal in the quotient and move it 4 times to the left to get our final answer of 0.1875. Congrats! So, you can use the previous methods for any fraction you want, but you may also want to try this strategy. Get any fraction, and multiply its denominator by a number to get a power of 10. This makes it way easier to convert to a decimal. So, if I had 33 over 20, I'd split up the improper fraction to a mixed number to get 1 and 13 over 20. Let's set the 1 aside for now to isolate 13 over 20, and convert this to a decimal first. I then multiply the denominator by 5 to get 100 as the equivalent fraction's denominator. Then I multiply the numerator by the same thing, 5, to get 65. 65 hundredths is way easier to represent as a decimal, 0.65, 
And then you can just add the one we took out earlier to get the decimal representation of 33 over 20, which is 1.65. Pat yourself on the back. You've just learned three ways to convert a fraction to a decimal. First, using a calculator, second, using long division, and third, getting the denominator to a power of 10. So, whether you're a student struggling over classwork, a teacher that forgot how to do this concept, or someone who likes watching math videos for fun, I hope I helped you all with your fraction converting. Subscribe if this was helpful, and as always, see you next Monday. Bye!